This is my second attempt to film this video because the first time the file corrupted. Uh, hopefully this one will work. I've also taken the controversial choice to film <laughs> in the room where my guinea pigs are. Um, and so there might be a little background noise from them, but hopefully not too much. Uh, this paper is uh, our 2021 paper published in PLOS One. Uh, called Detecting Joint Attention Events in Mother-Infant Dyads, Sharing Looks Cannot Be Reliably Identified by Naive Third-Party Observers. And this is by myself, Joanna Boren weitzel Nicole Leif, Claudia Wilke, and Katie Slocum. The Abstract. Joint attention or sharing attention with another individual about an object or event is a critical behaviour that emerges in pre-linguistic infants and predicts later language abilities. Given its importance, it is perhaps surprising that there is no consensus on how to measure joint attention in pre-linguistic infants. A rigorous definition posed by Siposova and Carpenter 2019 requires the infant and partner to gaze alternate between an object and each other, coordination of attention, and exchange communicative signals, explicit acknowledgement of jointly sharing attention. However, Hobson and Hobson 2007 proposed that the quality of gaze between individuals is in itself a sufficient communicative signal that demonstrates sharing of attention. They proposed that observers can reliably distinguish sharing, checking and orienting looks, but the empirical basis for this claim is limited as the study focused on two raters examining looks from 11 year old children. Here, we analysed categorizations made by 32 naive raters of 60 infant looks to their mothers to examine whether they could be reliably distinguished according to Hobson and Hobson's definitions. Raters had overall low agreement and only in 3 out of 26 cases did a significant majority of the raters agree with the judgment of the mother who had received the look. For the looks that raters did agree on, at above chance levels, look durations and the overall communication rate of the mother were identified as cues that raters may have relied upon. In our experiment, naive 30 third party observers could not reliably determine the type of look infants gave to their mothers, which indicates that subjective judgments of types of look should not be used to identify mutual awareness of sharing attention in infants. Instead, we advocate the use of objective behaviour measurement to infer that interactants know they are jointly attending to an object or event, and believe this will be a crucial step in understanding the ontogenetic and evolutionary origin of joint attention. Introduction. The emergence of joint attention, the ability of two individuals to share attention about an external object or event, is considered a crucial step in child development. Joint attention is thought to emerge in infancy at around 9 to 12 months and may be important in language acquisition. With children connecting words with objects to which they and another individual are jointly attending. Some have also argued that engaging in joint attention lays the foundation for shared intentionality, which in turn underpins human cooperation. Given the links between engaging in joint attention and both language and cooperation, it has been suggested that joint attention may, might represent a key species difference between humans and other great apes. However, the extent to which non-humans engage in joint attention is fiercely debated, with some studies suggesting non-human great apes have joint attention skills, and some studies finding no evidence for engagement in joint attention events. This debate is currently hampered by the lack of a consistent and clear definition of joint attention events that can be applied comparatively across other species. Given the developmental and evolutionary importance of joint attention, it is perhaps surprising that there is a lack of consensus in the literature as to both what constitutes joint attention and how to operationalize definitions. Most studies focus on joint attention skills and examine an individual's ability to initiate joint attention with a partner or respond to joint attention cues, such as the gaze or pointing gestures of a partner. Joint attention skills are necessary but not sufficient for engaging in joint attention events, which also require an individual to have the motivation and opportunity to use these skills with willing partners. What conceptually constitutes a full joint attention event, where at least two people actually engage in joint attention, remains diverse. 
In the literature, a joint attention event can refer to behaviours as varied as spectators in a stadium, all watching the same football match, and a child following the gaze of their mother to jointly attend to a butterfly and exchanging emotional reactions to the butterfly, making the jointness of the interaction manifest. Similarly, when it comes to operationalizing joint attention events, a diverse array of approaches also exists. In order to better understand this variation, we conducted a systematic search for operational definitions of joint attention events published in English in journals from 2000 to 2018 by inserting joint attention into Science Direct and then manually checking to remove papers that do not define or measure joint attention events or that only define initiating joint attention skills or responding to joint attention skills. We also excluded studies that did not examine human-human interactions, for example, human video, human robot, non-human human, etc. So this is all in table one, and I will pop that in the video right here, give you a little chance to look at it. These definitions of joint attention repre represent a wide range of behaviours and interactions with varying degrees of jointness. At the simplest end, it is sufficient for two individuals to both look at the same object, also called parallel attention, or for two individuals to look at one another, or at the more complex end, individuals must coordinate their attention between an object or event and one another, and also communicate with one another about it. The problem inherent in the simpler operational definitions of joint attention events is that such behavioural patterns could be explained by a properties of the event itself, a salient event such as a loud noise may draw the attention of multiple individuals but they might not be aware of others also orienting to that same event, or b the desire to check or monitor the behaviour of another, an event may be of interest but so is monitoring the behaviour of another individual resulting in gaze alternation between these competing loci of attention. Whilst monitoring or checking the behaviour of another individual might ultimately have sharing motives, one might also engage in this behaviour for more individualistic or competitive reasons. For example, an infant may want to check the mother is remaining close by, or an individual may want to check that another individual is not taking a valuable food item. It is also important to note that simpler forms of joint attention, such as the simultaneous monitoring of an object or event by multiple observers, emerge earlier in development, so common in six-month-olds, than more complex forms of joint attention, supporting the idea that different cognitive processes may underlie some behaviours currently labelled as joint attention in the literature. To try and capture the jointness of a joint attention event, more recent operational definitions seek to identify behavioural markers of mutual awareness that the interaction partners are attending to the event together and are thus sharing attention. One such behavioural marker is communication, which is a necessary element of the more complex operational definitions in Table 1. Whilst facial expressions such as smiles or looks of concern and vocalizations are forms of communication that can be objectively and reliably coded from interaction partners, it has also been suggested that the quality of looks exchanged during mutual gaze can be sufficient to communicate awareness of the shared nature of the engagement. This suggestion is implicit in the definitions that include acknowledges partners' participation, uh, for example, which is often assessed by mutual gaze, although there is often little uh, description given as to what it is about the gaze that acknowledges the partner's participation. Supporting this argument and providing further detail on how to assess gaze, Hobson and Hobson assert that observers can reliably identify sharing looks in children and distinguish them from checking or orienting looks. In this study, two raters classified the looks of 11-year-old children with and without autism towards an experimenter into three categories according to the definitions detailed in Table 2, uh, which I'll pop up on the screen now, and significant agreement between the two raters was found. It is unclear, however, whether the looks of pre-verbal infants can be reliably classified in the same way, and it is also important to test this with a greater number of raters. Here, we aim to robustly test whether raters can accurately judge the type of look given by an infant to their mother as sharing, checking, or orienting looks. This will enable us to evaluate whether the type of look should be considered a valid form of communication upon which judgments can be made about joint attention events, 
occurring between pre-verbal infants and their mothers. We asked a group of 32 naive raters to code infant looks to their mothers during free play according to the Hobson and Hobson definitions. Raters judged the type of looks in 63 short video clips cut three seconds before and after the infant looks at the mother. We also gave and also gave a rating of confidence in their judgment. For 33 videos, we had the mother's judgment as to the type of look her infant gave to her. We expected that if the types of looks could be reliably identified by naive observers, then we would obtain high levels of agreement between one, our 32 raters, and two, our raters and the mothers. We aimed to explore whether self-rated confidence was associated with high levels of agreement with other raters. For looks where there was strong agreement between raters, we then performed analysis of the video to try and ascertain which behavioural cues the raters may have been using, may have been basing their judgments on. Methods. Ethics statement. The University of York Department of Psychology Departmental Ethics Committee approved this study, ID number 605. Written consent was obtained from all participants. Participants. We recruited 32 women in York, UK, including 14 mothers and 18 non-mothers. This allowed us to test whether experience raising infants affected agreement on the categorization of infant looks. The average age for the mother group was 45.21 years old, and for the non-mother group was 32 years old. An independent samples t-test revealed that the mother group were significantly older than the non-mother group. Stimuli and experimental design. Stimuli consisted of videos that were cut into short clips uh, with a mean of 8.11 seconds that started three seconds before the child looked at their mother and ended three seconds after the child stopped looking at their mother unless there was another look within that three seconds, in which case it was cut immediately before or after the second look. This time window was chosen to give raters an opportunity to observe part of the interaction in which the look occurred, but without providing broader context and behaviours, as we wanted raters to judge the quality of the look, not the general intent of the infant or mother. We presented participants with two sets of videos. Set 1 contained 33 videos filmed in 2017, and set 2 contained 30 videos filmed in 2009-2010. For set 1, the experimenters had filmed seven mothers and infants living in or near York, UK, playing. Uh, the mean age of the infants was uh, 15.75 months, with a range of 8 to 26 months. We had interviewed the mothers immediately afterwards, showing them the videos and asking them to state what type of look they thought the infant had given them, using the same criteria as participants received from Table 2, with the exception that we also allowed mothers to say if they didn't know. This meant that the mothers were relatively confident in the sharing, checking and orienting look categorizations they provided. We selected groups of three videos for each mother-infant dyad, containing one of each type of look where possible, as judged by the mother. Only four looks in set one were classified as unknown by the mother. Three mother-infant dyads provided one group of three looks, and four dyads provided two groups of three looks. The set two videos were taken from eight mothers and infants living in or near York, UK, with a mean age of 11.125 uh, months, range of 11 to 12 months and we had no judgments from these mothers on the type of look the infant produced. We selected groups of three high-quality videos for each infant. Six mother-infant dyads provided one group of three looks, and two dyads provided two groups of three looks. The experiment was presented to participants using an online platform, gorilla.sc, which was set to private so that only the experimenters had access. Video dimensions for set 1 were 16 to 9, with size of 21.3 by 12 centimetres, and set 2 were 4 by 3, uh, with 16 by 12 centimetres. Within both sets of videos, the videos were shown in blocks of 3 that contained videos from the same mother-infant dyad. Videos were randomised within the blocks, and the order of blocks was randomised across the experiment. We also counterbalanced the order of the response buttons, so there's three types of look, across participants. There were six possible orders for the three response buttons, sharing, checking, orienting, and participants were randomly assigned to one of these six orders. Participants were given a printed sheet of the definitions of the three types of looks from table two to refer to throughout the experiment, and we ensured that the order of definitions on the sheet matched the order of response buttons in the experiment. Procedure. 
The experimenter started the experiment for the participant who was seated in a quiet room in front of a laptop computer, HP Elite Book 14 inch display 64 bit operating system. The participant was first provided with instructions on the screen, which informed them that the videos would play only once and if they saw the look, they should choose one of the three types of look, sharing, checking, orienting, even if they were uncertain, but if they did not see the look from the infant, they should select the did not see look button. We wanted to both standardize the number of times participants could view a video and to reduce the effects of fatigue on performance. Therefore, the video played only once in each trial. When the participant had selected the type of look, on the next screen, they were asked to rate how confident they were in their judgment on a scale of zero to 10, from not at all confident to extremely confident, using a continuous slider. The confidence marker's starting position on all trials was one. There was no time limit on the duration participants spent making their judgment. Once participants had completed the confidence rating, they pressed a button that read next to start the next trial, so the experiment progressed at a pace chosen by the participant. Video coding. To assess the possible cues that raters may have been relying on to make their judgments, we measured the duration of infant looking to mother, presence and duration of mutual gaze between infant and mother, and infant or mother communication, frequency of vocalizations, gestures or salient facial expressions during one, the infant's look to the mother, and two, the whole video clip. Videos were coded using the Observer XT14 software, and the following measures were extracted. Infant looking direction, mother's face or elsewhere, mother looking direction, infant's face or elsewhere, and infant and mother facial expressions, gestures, and vocal communication, including vocalizations and language. All changes in the looking direction category, no matter how short, were coded. The three types of communication were coded as a new instance when they changed to a new signal within the same communication type, for example, from a smile to a frown, or when there was a gap of over one second between signals, for example, talking, 1.2 second pause, and more talking. Instances of each communication type were considered separately so that a sim simultaneous smile and talking represent one facial expression and one vocal communication. To assess the reliability of the video coding, KG <laughs> coded all videos, and CW coded six videos from set one and six from set two, which was 20% of all videos. Using the reliability function in Observer software, we ascertained the two video coders had high levels of agreement. Um, so duration of looks from the infant to mother's face was a kappa of 0.88. Mutual gaze between infant or mother, kappa of 0.98. Number of infant facial expressions, gestures and vocalizations, kappa 0.78. And mother facial expressions, gestures and vocalizations, kappa 0.76. Data analysis. It was necessary to make some exclusions from the data set prior to analysis. There were two videos where over three participants did not see the look, um, and we excluded these videos entirely from analysis. There was also one video that was accidentally duplicated, oops, and we re removed the second appearance of this video from analysis. These exclusions left 30 videos for, set, for analysis in set one and 30 videos for analysis in set two. As the number of instances of communication produced by infants and mothers in these short video clips were low, we extracted the following measures from the coded videos. One, during the infant's look to the mother, we considered the presence absence of each type of communication, facial, gestural, vocal for both the infant and the mother. And two, during the whole video clip, we considered the total number of communication events. So the sum of all vocal, gestural and facial communication events produced by A, the mother and B, the infant. All analyses were conducted in R, 3.5.3, and we used the packages IRR for Fleiss's Capra, LME4 with LMER test for GLMMs, and ggplot2 with PLYR for plotting. Descriptions of each model are included in the re relevant results sections. Results. Overall agreement among naive raters. First, we calculated Fleiss's Capra to check overall inter-rater reliability for both sets of videos. For set one with 30 videos and 32 raters, Fleiss's kappa was 0 0.157. For set two with 30 videos and 32 raters, Fleiss's kappa was 0 0.228. These are both low rates of overall agreement, suggesting that in general participants did not agree on types of look. We asked our 32 raters whether they had children, there were 14, or did not have children, there were 18 as we thought that experience with young children might affect their judgments.
For set one, raters who were mothers had a kappa of 0.184, and raters who were not mothers had a kappa of 0.155. Um, for set two, raters who were mothers had a kappa of 0.234, and raters who were not mothers had a kappa of 0.226. So descriptively, mothers and non-mothers seem to agree on the types of looks at comparable rates. So for all further analyses, we analysed mothers and non-mothers together. Rater agreement on specific videos. Next, we tested whether a higher proportion of participants agreed on the type of look the infant gave in each video clip more than expected by chance. Uh, chance would be 0.33. A binomial test was conducted for the type of look chosen by the highest number of raters for each video clip to see if a higher proportion of raters than expected by chance chose each type of look. As we conducted 30 binomial tests on set one and set two, of the videos, we Bonferroni adjusted the significance threshold to 0 0.0016, which is 0 0.05 divided by 30 binomial tests, meaning that 20 or more raters had to be in agreement on a specific video in set one or set two to be significantly above the level expected by chance. For set one out of 30 videos, there were nine videos where the raters agreed on one type of look, significantly more than chance. Um, this is shown in table three, which I'll pop up here. Of these videos, five of the looks were rated as sharing looks, two were rated as checking looks, and two were rated as an orienting look by most raters. When we compared this to how the mothers rated their own looks, the mothers agreed with only two out of five of the sharing looks, um, one out of two of the checking looks, and zero out of two of the orienting looks. This means that of the 26 looks mothers had classified as sharing, checking, or orienting, in only three of these cases did a significant majority of raters agree with the categorization of the mother. For set two out of 30 videos, there were 14 videos where the raters agreed on one look significantly more than chance. Of these videos, six were sharing looks, seven were checking looks, and one uh, was an orient rated an orienting look by most raters. We also tested whether raters were more or less confident for high agreement looks as determined by the binomial tests or low agreement looks where the two highest look types had a difference of less than three responses. On a scale of one to 10, the mean confidence for high agreement looks was 6.19 and for low agreement looks was 5.64 and overall participants used a limited range of the scale from 4.8 to 7.8. A paired t-test revealed that raters were significantly more confident about high agreement looks than low agreement looks. So how are raters identifying high agreement sharing and checking looks? To understand the cues that raters may be relying on to make their judgments, we compared behaviour of the infant and mother coded from 11 videos that most raters agreed were sharing looks to the 9 videos that most raters agreed were checking looks from the binomial analysis. We excluded the three videos where most raters agree the infant look was an orienting look due to the low number. We examined whether high agreement sharing or checking looks differed in terms of a the duration of look from the infant to their mother's face, b the presence of mutual gaze between mother and infant, c the presence absence of facial expressions, gestures and vocal communication from infant to mother during the infant's look to their mother, d frequency of any communicative signals produced by the infant in the whole video, E, the presence, absence of facial expressions, gestures, and vocal communication from mother to infant during the infant's look to the mother, and F, frequency of any communicative signals produced by the mother in the whole video. So for A, the duration of look from the infant to their mother's face, a GLMM with duration of infant look to mother as the response variable and type of agreed look as the independent variable and video dyad ID as a random factor confirmed that looks judged as sharing were significantly longer than looks judged as checking looks. The duration of mutual gaze between mother and infant, there were only nine videos with mutual gaze, seven judged to be sharing looks, two judged to be checking looks, so the sample of mutual gaze occurrences was too small for inferential statistics to be appropriate. Descriptively, when mutual gaze was present, it seemed to be for a longer duration in looks judged as sharing, so that's a mean of 2.31 seconds, then looks judged as checking, which was a mean of 0.53 seconds. C, the presence absence of facial expressions, gestures, and vocal communication produced by the infant to their mother uh, during their look to their mother. We then assessed whether the presence or absence of infant facial expressions, gestures, or vocal communication during an infant's look to their mother differed for high agreement sharing and checking looks. We ran three GLMMs with presence absence of communication type, 
as the response variable uh, with binomial distribution and the independent variable as type of agreed look, video ID, as random factor. Although descriptively uh, more communicative signals were produced by the infant during sharing than checking looks, the models indicated there were no significant difference in the likelihood of infant communicative signals occurring in looks judged to be sharing or checking. Um, so D, the same thing but for mothers, presence, absence of facial expressions, gestures, vocal communication produced by mother during infants look to their mother. We then assessed whether the presence or absence of mother's facial expressions, gestures and vocal communication during an infant's to their mother differed for high agreement sharing and checking looks. There was zero or highly limited variation in at least one of the categories of looks for each of the communication behaviours, rendering inferential statistics inappropriate. Descriptively, for all three types of communication, there is almost no mother communication present for the high agreement checking looks, while there is more communication present in high agreement sharing looks, with 100% of these having vocal communication present. So are raters responding to charismatic, i.e. more communicative mothers or infants? We also wanted to test whether raters attended to the overall rates of communication from the mothers and infants in the whole video clip, and perhaps used the heuristic that more communicative or charismatic individuals were more likely to share looks. To test this idea, we first ran a GLMM with frequency of mother communication as the response variable, type of agreed look as the independent variable, and video dyad ID as a random factor. Mother communication in terms of the total number of facial expressions, gestures, and vocalizations combined was significantly more frequent in high agreement videos rated as sharing looks than those rated as checking looks. We ran the same GLMM, but with frequency of infant communication as the response variable. We did not see the same pattern, rather infant communication occurs at similar frequencies throughout the high agreement videos rated as checking and sharing looks. Discussion. As joint attention is so pivotal in human development and potentially also in human evolution, our main objective in this study was to determine whether the quality of an infant's look to their mother can be reliably identified and therefore is sufficient for distinguishing whether joint attention has occurred. We found overall low agreement among naive raters in assigning looks from infants to their mothers as sharing, checking, or orienting looks, suggesting that the definitions given by Hobson and Hobson were not adequate for our raters to be able to reliably assign these types of looks in infants. Whilst both our study and Hobson and Hobson's study used naive raters to identify looks from videos of dyadic interactions, there are several key differences between our studies, which may explain our failure to replicate their findings. Firstly, Hobson and Hobson used footage of 11-year-olds with and without autism interacting with an experimenter. Whilst they report that mostly it was straightforward to feel and judge whether the looks seen on videotape were sharing expressive of in interpersonal engagement, checking indicative of glancing up to check the tester's face for a reaction or instruction, or orienting, looks from preverbal infants proved much more difficult to judge for our raters. Cues as to the intention underlying looks in preverbal infants may be subtler and more difficult to distinguish than in the older children in Hobson and Hobson's study. There are also other important methodological differences between the studies. Our raters were constrained to viewing a short video clip once at normal speed, whereas Hobson and Hobson don't specify any constraints on how much video surrounding the looks was reviewed, how many times raters viewed the videos, or at what speed. Second, whereas Hobson and Hobson had two raters assess just 27 looks from six children, we had 30 raters assess 60 looks from 15 infants, providing a more representative sample of both raters and looks. Whilst these differences mean that our study does not challenge Hobson and Hobson's original findings, our results question whether they can be extended to preverbal infants. In our controlled experiment, sharing looks could not be reliably identified by naive third-party observers in preverbal infants, suggesting that types of looks should not be considered as a valid way of identifying joint attention events in preverbal infants. We found not only that naive observers had low levels of agreement with each other, but critically they rarely agreed with the judgment of the mother who received the looks. When considering the 26 looks that mothers categorized as sharing, checking, or orienting, in only 3 out of 26 cases did a significant majority of raters agree with the mother's judgment on the type of look they received from their infants. It is possible that when engaged in an interaction and receiving a look directly, an individual can accurately infer the intentions of their interaction partner, and we hoped that the mother's judgments would made immediately after the play interaction would be an approximation of this experience. 
Our data shows clearly, however, that third-party observers seem unable to access the same cues that the mothers receive directly from their infants. This is perhaps not surprising, as joint attention arises when partners dynamically perceive, interpret, and respond to behaviours in each other. As researchers, we cannot access a mother's experience of being involved in an interaction with her infant. Perhaps future research could assess if types of look can be reliably identified from multiple observers from footage obtained from head-mounted cameras on the interaction partners. Whilst this doesn't replicate the experience of being the interaction partner, it may give a better approximation of the mother's perspective of their interaction with their infant, while still allowing the reliability of judgments to be assessed, which is fundamental to replicable, reliable scientific investigation. We considered that people with more experience with infants may be more reliable at assigning the types of look. So we examined the responses of mothers and non-mothers separately. However, we found that mothers and non-mothers showed similar low levels of agreement on the type of look. Experience with young infants does not appear to make raters more reliable in coding, sharing, checking, or orienting looks. Another interesting finding was that raters were significantly more confident for high agreement looks compared to low agreement looks. We don't know the extent to which participants explicitly or implicitly relied on the behavioural cues that we coded in the videos, but given the positive relationship between a rater's self-report of confidence in their judgement and agreement between raters, future research may be able to usefully ask raters to reflect on the cues they relied on. Taken together, our results indicate that in our study, naive third-party observers were unable to categorise most infant looks reliably. Future research could investigate if reliability can be improved by changing parameters of the current study, such as raters receiving more training before completing the task, or raters watching longer clips that contain more contextual information, more times, or in slow motion. Until robust evidence of parameters that may, be, may support reliable identification of look type by third-party observers is available, we suggest that type of look should not be used to assess whether joint attention events have occurred in infants. Hobson and Hobson was the only paper we found that made explicit claims about the quality of looks as valid markers of joint attention, but there were many papers that implicitly use quality of looks to determine whether children acknowledge their partner's participation, and subsequently whether joint attention has occurred. While the frequency and duration of looks between partners can be readily and objectively extracted from an interaction through video coding, our low levels of agreement on the types of look suggest that rating the quality of looks could be an unreliable way of assessing whether partners understand that they are both attending to the same objective event together and therefore engaging in a joint attention event. We identified a subset of looks where significantly more raters than expected by chance agreed on the type of look as checking or sharing. Video coding of infant and mother behaviour during these high agreement videos revealed several potential behavioural cues that raters may have been relying on to distinguish these types of look. Sharing looks were significantly longer than checking looks and descriptively were more likely to contain mutual gaze, and when it did occur, mutual gaze periods seemed to be longer. Gaze, attention shifts, gaze alternation and mutual gaze are already used across many definitions of joint attention events, and so including a measure of duration for looks and mutual gaze would be an objective and readily codable variable to examine in future studies on joint attention. When we looked at communication, there was no significant effect of infant communication on how raters assigned looks. Because we had instructed the raters to attend to the infant's look to the mother, we expected that they would rely more on the infant's behaviour than the mother's. Surprisingly, we found the mother's, but not the infant's, overall rates of communication varied significantly with the classification of high agreement sharing and checking looks, indicating this may have been a cue the raters relied on to make their judgments. Taken together, it is possible that in the minority of cases where raters agreed at above chance levels, they were, may have been operating with the heuristics that longer or mutual looks are indicative of a sharing intent and that more communicative mothers are more likely to receive sharing looks from their infant. Whilst duration of look is a relevant cue, using the mother's communicativeness to make judgments about the infant's intentions is unlikely to be a reliable cue. This highlights the limitations of asking raters to make holistic judgments of stimuli. It is impossible to know which behavioural cues raters relied on at either an explicit or implicit level, and if raters are relying upon irrelevant cues, their judgments would be invalid. We therefore advocate focusing on objective behavioural criteria for assessing sharing intentions rather than rating subjective characteristics of behaviour. Our study was conducted in a single species and in a single cultural context, providing favourable conditions for reliable judgments to be made, but our raters still failed to agree on the majority of their judgments. 
If we are to fully understand the ontogeny of joint tension, we need to address the persistent sampling bias in developmental psychology for Western educated, industrialized, rich and democratic weird samples and study early joint tension in diverse cultural contexts. Equally, in order to understand the evolutionary origins of joint tension, we need to examine interactions in other species. As our results cast doubt on whether types of look can be reliably determined within a single species and cultural context, it seems highly unlikely they would be reliably identified in cross-cultural or cross-species comparisons. Whilst subjective holistic judgments of behavioural intentions can seem appealing in that they may have the potential to capture nuanced, subtle cues that quantitative measurement of behaviour via video coding may miss, our study indicates that we need to move away from subjective approaches that assess the quality of looks and engagement based on a holistic viewing of an interaction. Moving towards an approach where the jointness of a joint attention event and awareness of attending to the object event together is based on extraction of detailed behaviours from videos such as look duration, mutual gaze duration and communication by both interactants will yield conservative, but importantly reliable identification of joint attention events that can be applied across cultures and species. Looking ahead, the implementation of rigorous, reliable measures of behavior will be crucial for understanding the ontogenetic and evolutionary origins of joint attention. Acknowledgements. Many thanks to the mothers and infants who participated in the study, to Junior Whiteley who assisted in collecting and cutting the videos used, and to Eugen Lee for help with the early versions of the video coding scheme. This study was funded by a European Research Council Consolidator grant awarded to Katie Slocum. Um, the funders had no role in study design, data collection and analysis, decision to publish, or preparation of the manuscript. And all relevant data are within the manuscript and its supporting information files, which will be linked below. I, <laughs> the references will start to roll now. Thank you so much for listening again to this paper. Um, I obviously am linking the paper below so that it has, there's options for people to read that if they want. Uh, Plus One also publishes reviewer comments so you can see the full like review process that we went through. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed listening to engaging with this paper. I will be continuing to release uh, one of these each month, hopefully as I manage to keep up with them. And take care and have a good day.